Jack, don't leave stairs shoes on now. Am I talking to myself? Down these stairs, shoes on, now! All right, shouty McShout, what's the big rush? No, oh, taking him out of fizzies. She's taking open a few pals down the park for the day. Oh. Well, I thought you needed the break, and he's not seen his mates in ages. Well, he can't be that fussed. He's only just got in the shower. What? Oh, let him sack it off. He can stay here with me. No, no, it's all the rains. Look, I haven't got time for this. I should have been in Stockport like five minutes ago. Kev, chill. I'll walk in there myself if it's that big a deal. We'll swing by for a sherbet dip if you get a wiggle on Jack. Oh, great. Bribe him with sweets. Do we need to talk about something? No, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm just a bit stressed. I've got a hell of a day. So, leave Jack with me. No sugary snacks, I promise. Took a lot of guts for her to open up to you. You might want to be a bit more supportive. What? Am I not allowed to be stressed anymore? Yes, as long as that's all it is. Oh, sorry to bother you, but I'm raising money for all of this treatment in Germany, and I know it's a bit cheeky to ask, but please, would you sponsor me? Oh, I don't know. What do you reckon, Ty? Do you think we should? Well, it depends, doesn't it? What on? Well, I don't know if it's trekking up Kilimanjaro or something like that. Why should we pay for you to have the experience of a lifetime? Yeah, or jumping out of a plane or something. Pfft, the cheek of some people. Well, no, no, guys, it's just a sponsored silence at the Rovers. It's going to be well boring. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Where do we sign? Daniel, wait up. You can't blame her for being upset. You're going out with a hooker. She's a female escort. Potato, potato. Potato, potato, and for the last time, we're just mates. Yeah, well, Beth doesn't think men and women can ever be just mates. Rick, is it's leading somewhere? Well, it isn't. And even if it was, I don't see what the big deal is all about. Uh, she sleeps with other blokes for money. Yeah, out of necessity. You know, if you got to know her, you'd realise she's actually a really nice girl. And I suppose you're going to save her, are you? We've all seen Pretty Woman, mate, and wish we was Richard Gay. But real life isn't like what it is in the movies, is it? Look, I know it's not really any of our business, but Beth's only thinking about Bertie, cos this girl's not exactly stepmom material, is she? Even I can see that. Oh, when you sit down, you're making me feel dizzy. <sighs> I'm not sitting in them horrible chairs anymore. You're making me bum feel numb. Mm. Well, they certainly weren't designed with comfort in mind. This leatherette is making me sweat like you wouldn't believe. It's like doing hot yoga in a fat suit. Oh. Hi, Emma. Yeah, we're just waiting to see the doctor now. Oh, wow, that's great. She's raised 500 pounds in sponsorship. Well done, darling. It's amazing. Yeah, well, she's got to keep a gobshot first, hasn't she? That won't be easy, will it? <laughs> Says you. <laughs> Glad to see you're both keeping your spirits up. Can we see all of her? Of course, but I need to speak to you first. Well, I've already told you. I'm not talking about that end-of-life nonsense, not till I've spoken with Dr Schmitz and his team. And I respect that. But you need to be aware that Oliver was having some breakthrough seizure activity. So we need to increase the medication accordingly. I'm sorry. Right, thanks. Hey, look, the German doctor's be here in a couple of weeks. And we're nowhere near ready, are we? As you mean? Nick, we need half a million quid. 500 pound would just about cover the plane tickets. It's nowhere near enough if they want to take him back to Germany for treatment. It's too much choice in that. You know, when I was a kid, you only had like three years. Sort of vinegar cheese and onion and plain. But nowadays, you can get pretty much anything you want. You get your pizza, you get your Peking duck, you get your roast beef and Yorkshire pud. But, you know, the other day, we had a box of Cajun squirrel rank. Is that these? You got cheesy pups. Excellent choice. This for Jack. I promise his dad won't buy many sweets. <laughs> what? They're practically vegetables. Yeah, I'm not too sure that Ken would agree, though. Yeah, no, I know. But the lad needs cheering up. Just found out he's getting picked on. Really? Yeah, by some of his so-called mates. I had to drag it out of him, but apparently someone's been going around saying that the only reason he's good at athletics is because he's got a blade. Mm. Kids can be so cruel, can't they? Yeah. And what did you say? Well, I said the, the only reason people are mean is because they're jealous. Yeah. 
True. And if they dare say anything else, he should show what else he can do with that blade of his. <laughs> you didn't. I did. Good for you. And listen, I won't worry about it too much, honey. Yeah, kids are like mortal enemies one minute, kissing and making up the next, and quite literally in my Asha's case. Oh, she's not bad with that lad, is she? Yes. And guess who's public enemy number one? Hey. Uh, you OK? Uh, yeah, I'm good, actually. It was, a, it was a relief to get everything off my chest. I, and, and Kev's OK with it all. It seems to be. Yeah, it's just, um, you know, I know it's a, a lot to get his head around, isn't it? Well, he can handle it. He loves me. To be honest, I'm surprised to hear you see her again. How many times? We're not seeing each other. Not like that, anyway. You honestly telling me that you haven't got a single female friend that you haven't slept with? Yeah, one, Mary. But I say she was the exception, not the rule. <laughs> I just think if you like a girl enough to be friends with her, then why wouldn't you want the benefits? Come on, don't tell me you've not thought about it. Yeah, of course I have. But it's complicated. And anyway, as much as it pains me to admit it, Beth and Kirk are right about one thing. I have Bertie to consider. So my advice, steer clear. Go find yourself a nice, wholesome librarian or a primary school teacher. Heck, bring back Bethany, always forgiven. But this Nikki, she's bad news. She's gonna cause you nothing but heartache. Any final requests before we start the clock? Uh, that's cheating, isn't it? Oh, the poor girl's got to be able to communicate somehow. Oh, well, why stop at a Magna Doodle, then? Why not get her a laptop and an artificial voice box while you're at it? You're being ridiculous. Oh, come on, we've got 12 hours of this. Let's just get on with it. Oh, oh thanks for coming. Oh, no, don't worry, she's not started yet. Oh, I would have got here sooner, only I had to put on an emergency wash. Sean had run out of smalls. Sean makes you do his laundry. He doesn't make me. I offered. I quite enjoy it. There are so many things wrong with that arrangement. Enough. I'm starting the countdown. Any last words? Right. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, seven, eight, 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 eight
Oh, uh, uh, what's that supposed to mean? It means from now on you stay out of Jack's way. And, 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 and how are we meant to do that? We live together. Yeah, well, leave the parenting to me. Oh, oh, hang on. I know what this is about. You don't trust me with him, after what I told you, and that's why you arranged for him to go around to Fizzers, and... and that's why he didn't want him hanging out with me. Admit it. Do you blame me? I would never do anything to hurt Jack. You took drugs in front of your own kids. Well, that's not who I am anymore. And you said I could tell you anything. I thought you could handle the truth. Yeah, and so did I. I guess we was both wrong. So, I gave the kitchen a once-over. I mean, it didn't really need it, because we're not really there. And then I put a wash on. Now, Janice said you should always do bedding and towels on a 60, but between you and me, I do everything on a 40, because I think it, your colours fade otherwise. <laughs> oh. Putting stuff on my account. You must think I'm mad. I think you're pretty incredible, actually. I just wanted him to know that I'm still here. Then I ran out of things to say. I'm sure when he gets better, he'll really appreciate knowing his way around a washing machine. How are we going to get him to Germany, Nick? I might sell my shares in the factory. Really? You'd really do that? When are you going to get it through your thick head? I will do anything for you and Oliver. Thanks, love. All oh, right, I've got a good one for you. Name at least three members of the girl band Eternal. Go on, it's easy, this one. Right, come on then, Smarty Pants. This is your chance to shine. Uh, Louise Redknapp, formerly Nerdin. Kelly Bryan. And... Oh, you know, Summer, it's gone right out me head. Esther and Vernie Bennett. Hey, claim to fame. Vernie once let me a tampon in the Hacienda. At least I think it was her. All right, ladies, what's going on then? Oh, Emma's doing a sponsored silence to raise money for Oliver. Cool. A donation to her cause would be greatly appreciated, Dev. And we're not accepting small change, so don't even think about donating anything less than 50 sheets. Tracy! What? He spends more than that on a round of golf. He can afford it. You know what, ladies? I seriously think that I've left my wallet in the shop. But what about your takeaway? I'll be back for it, Jen. Back for it. Oh, as if he left his wallet. Don't worry, I'll get 50 quid out of him if it kills me. Dev! I would not want to be Dev right now. <laughs> All the whiskey, please. Are, are you all right? Fine. Except for some reason, Dev's gone AWOL and closed the corner shop. Well, you don't look fine, if you don't mind me saying. I do mind, actually. I was right then. You are a cheese and pickle man. Cheese and marmite, actually. Remember that for next time. And you, a cheese savoury. Not a fan myself. Onions tend to repeat on me. Yeah, but in my line of work, it pays to have bad breath. Stops the punters from trying to kiss you. I don't know why I said that. Well, I do. It's to try and make it sound like what I do is normal. Like there's nothing to be ashamed of. That's why I said what I did to Kirk yesterday. But he's not happy about it, is he? It's Beth I've got to worry about. She's not exactly known for her open-mindedness. I didn't want this life for myself, you know. I had big dreams once. Oh, yeah. I wanted to be a chef. Me aunt runs this B&B and live in St Anne's. I'd help her out for pocket money in the summer holidays, pot washing and that. It's right on the seafront. I used to think I could see the edge of the world from her kitchen window. She's got a full-time job for me, actually, if I want it. That's brilliant. Yeah. 
I've got debts which need paying off in the flat first, then I'll need a new place for me and Maisie. I don't want a sponge off my hand. But it's something to work towards, isn't it? Yeah, I just wish there was something that I could do to help you. You already have. I've started to dream again. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten that boy. <laughs> <laughs> Research about selling my shares. Listen, I know you want to do this and it's incredibly generous of you, but you've worked so hard on that business, I can't let you sell it. What would you do? Be there for my family. You know, when we got back together when I was pregnant, I had my doubts, you know, about you becoming a stepdad. Did you? Yeah. I was worried that that you wouldn't understand that I'd put Oliver first. Before everything. Even you, if it came to it. But I shouldn't have worried, should I? Because you'd do the same. You put Oliver first. And you always will. And I love you so much for that. Jenny said you were out here. And she also said you were on the hard stuff, so, uh... Well, I'd bring you these. Soak up the whiskey. Can we call them a peace offering? What for? Well, I obviously said the wrong thing earlier, you know, when I implied that Kev wouldn't understand. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot, what can I say? Oh, there was no need to apologise, because you were absolutely right. Changed everything. I, I should never have told him the truth. Well, that's a stroke of luck. What is? One of my clients has cancelled this evening, which means we've got a couple of free hours. We could chill out, watch a film, eat our way through the rest of them buddies. I can't. Beth will be dropping off Bertie soon. Why can't you have him a bit longer? No. I just don't like to take advantage. What about if we do something this weekend, eh? My treat. It's OK. I know when I'm getting the brush off. Hey, I just need a bit more notice, that's all. Come on, I'll borrow my dad's car. We can drive to Lytham St Anne's. You can show me the edge of the world. OK. You're on. But you do know the world's round, not flat, right? Yeah. Potato, potato. Now, before you say anything, I've only just put my feet up. There's beer in the fridge and... Uh, our Jack's in his room doing his homework. Have they not shown up, then? Not since your massive overreaction. <laughs> oh, I don't get it. If Jack had told you he was being bullied, you'd have said exactly the same thing. Yeah, well, I've told her to stay away from Jack from now on. You daft pillar! What did you go and say that for? Because I don't trust her. This time was just a wobble, but what if next time it's something more? Look, I know she won't put him in danger on purpose, but... If she's off her head, would she even know? She's not that person anymore. Yeah, that's what she said. So, you have to believe her. Look, Kev, you were the one who wanted to know everything, so now you do, you need to show her that her past doesn't matter, that you love her for who she is, not who she was. You do still love her, don't you? Of course I do. So? Pull yourself together, go and find Abby and tell her before she does something stupid. 
I've been kidding myself all this time, thinking I could just erase the past. Forget it never happened. No, it'll always be there. The past won't ever go away. But you can change the way that you think about it. So, instead of being disgusted by how low you've sunk, you know, think about how you managed to get your head above water again. You know, how you made it to dry land. See, now then, that is something to be proud of, isn't it? See, you always know what to say to make me feel better. Well, it's only because I've been there myself, you know, drowning. <sighs> Kevin will never understand me the way you do. Well, I don't know, you know, maybe he just needs a bit more time. Mm, you didn't see the way he looked at me. Sure as hell didn't see any pride, I just saw disgust. <laughs> I think it's over. Well, if it is, you'll deal with it, right? You will. You'll start swimming. Only this time you won't be on your own. So if Kev has bailed on you, I promise you this, I'm not going anywhere, OK? And I mean that. Right, well... Put a book into an hotel, then. Well, can't you crash with Tim and Sal? Yeah, but then I'd have to tell him the whole sorry tale and I just I haven't got that in me tonight. Besides, quite fancy the idea of stretching out on a massive super king in my birthday suit, eating loads of overpriced salty snacks from the minibar. Sounds good to me. Well, you could always join me. I could think of plenty of other things we could do in our birthday suits. Coronation Street continues in half an hour.